And yes, there is a small fringe element in this country that is angry, that doesn't believe in science, that is lashing out with racist, misogynistic attacks. But Canadians, the vast majority of Canadians, are not represented by them. And I know will not allow those voices, those special interest groups. By special interest groups, do you mean Pfizer and the World Economic Forum? Those protesters who can, I don't even want to call them protesters, those anti-vaxxer mobs to dictate how this country gets through this pandemic. Note, note the disgust on his face when he thinks about them merely being protesters and has to reframe it. Instead, he demonizes them again by calling them anti-vaxxer mobs. You know those mobs of anti-vaxxers that went around like Black Lives Matter and destroyed small businesses and busted down windows? I mean, really, note the disgust on his face from his moral highness. And how we recover our economy free from lockdowns, where people can get back to work and back to doing the things they want to do and keep our kids safe. They don't get to dictate policy of this government. So it is puzzling to people to see that on vaccines and on so many other things, Aaron O'Toole is at least taking some of his cues from them. Canadians need leadership, and I know liberals across the country are willing to stand up to ensure Canadians get that. Oh, next question. Hi, Mr. Trudeau. Uh, you just said that you can't let the, quote, anti-vaxxer mob dictate the future, and you also said that you can't back down. But security aside, do you not feel that your attendance at events like yesterday, where the protesters are largely not wearing masks, there is no social distancing, does that not pose a health risk to you, your security detail, and your supporters who were there? Some of them were young, unvaccinated children as well. Note how the media, his willing little acolytes, set up and frame the question. They are also disgusted by the people that are not going along with the plan, and they are demonizing them as well. This is groupthink. This is the inability to think for oneself and separate yourself from the dogma that is being spread. First of all, the idea that those anti-vaxxers were choosing not to wear masks for the protest, but were about to go home or to the grocery store or to, their, uh, to visit their friends and wear masks is, uh, is simply not true. They're going to be putting people at risk wherever they go, which is part of why we're going to make sure that people who choose not to get vaccinated don't get to get on a plane or a train, don't get to work in the public service, don't get uh, to you know, by working with the provinces on vaccine certifications and mandates, don't get to go to movie theaters or gyms uh, or restaurants and other non-essential services. That's how we keep people safe. And that actually is part of the choice Canadians get to make in this, in this election. And that's why it's so important to continue to stand strong and determined on moving forward in the right way. Aaron O'Toole has basically said that any of those anti-vaxxers who were protesting could be sitting across the aisle from your 12-year-old on a flight south in a few months. But they'd have gotten tested. That's not good enough. That's where we disagree, and that is something we are going to continue to stand strongly on, and liberals across the country alongside Canadians who continue to know this is the way forward, will continue to stand strong for the future. And again, I am 90% sure that at this point, we already knew or had the inkling that the COVID-19 vaccine did not prevent transmission. It's like he's Pfizer's enforcer as they act like a giant vacuum cleaner sucking up Canadian taxpayer money.
Do you really think that all this could be random? And again, note the fear and disgust that he has for the anti-vaxxers. That is telling.